Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we're going to be talking about opinions, man's opinion versus the Bible. Coming up next. Right, everybody, welcome, welcome. Um, episode 100, episode 100. And as you saw at the beginning, Big Lebowski, uh, that is a film from the 90s, late 90s, Joel and Ethan Cohen. Uh, it does have some language, some crass parts, so buyer beware. But uh, it is very funny. It's a cult classic. And it's just such a great, goofy, weird character. So, figured it's episode 100. Let's get a little crazy. What's not crazy is coffee. Coffee's always good. My trusty sidekick. We're going to be talking about man's opinion today. And, um, well, before we do, before we get too far, do me a favor. If you haven't told me where you're from, go ahead and drop me a comment and tell me where you're from. Uh, you don't have to give me like your address or anything, but just state or city and state. That'd be cool. I'm always curious where people are from. Uh, a year ago, over a year ago, 15 months ago, technically, or so, maybe 16 months now, back in March of 2021 is when I started really producing content. Um, and it's been great so far. It's been wonderful. I've had a lot of interesting dialogues and conversations and looked at a lot of different things that I probably wouldn't have necessarily looked at. And I think my favorite part, besides the interaction with you all, actual uh real people commenting and having comment strings. It's a, um, I'm part of a group that has a lot of other uh, YouTubers as well. And that's probably my favorite. And I've built several friendships, relationships uh, with uh, friendships, I guess. I don't know. Difference really. Yeah. I am a pastor, by the way, if you don't know that. And I am a father of four uh, here in Kentucky. And so it's, Lord's been good to us. I went to seminary, uh, graduated a couple years ago and here in Kentucky, originally from California hence the accent. And that's just who it is. That's who, that's who, that's who it is. Me, it, that's who I am. Uh, just a slice. So I appreciate the subs. I got a lot of new subs over the last month. Uh, I was out at the SBC and again, I, I'm thankful for that. Uh, go ahead and share this. If you wouldn't mind, uh, just share this video or share the channel. I'm trying to get to a thousand. That's really kind of when things open up and you can get uh, some little ad revenue and let YouTube actually pay you. That is the plan. It could change. It could change. The Lord could move, but uh, in a different direction. But anyway, that's that's a little bit about me. I do have an email in the desktop version. I don't think it appears on mobile for some reason, uh, but it is in there. It's rthco at protonmail.com. rthco at protonmail.com. I have had a number of people reach out to me that way too, asking about this or that. And I've had a few conversations. I am looking at doing a debate later on about Roman Catholicism and Protestantism, a live debate uh, later this month, maybe August. We'll see. But thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is episode 100. And as I was saying and got sidetracked a year ago, over a year ago, 15 months or so ago, I did my first video. I finally sat down and just recorded. I had started the channel before almost over a year before, and it really didn't do a whole lot. And talking about man's opinion, and the Bible is just man's opinion, I think is what it is. Uh, and I'll drop it in the description. Go check that video out uh, and just kind of see uh, how things are different, how things are similar. We're discussing that then, and we're going to just kind of do a celebration now. Um as I said, this is the hundredth episode. I've looked at a lot of different things. A lot of times it's SBC, Big Eva related stuff, but it's ultimately my weekly show. This show is discussing church and culture issues, seeking to examine and expose them and what's really going on. So being against the world before the world, or if you like the Latin, like I do, contra mundum pro mundo. So contra, of course, like contradiction, contrary, um, hence contra thoughts. These are against the my thoughts are against these things basically so that's the motto of the channel and my of course my name is richard contra mundum i also have weekly shows try to be weekly with interviews <coughs> interview shows and so 
the goal with that, of course, is letting the guest speak and talk about various subjects. So the Bible is just man's opinion. You've heard this, right? You've heard this a lot. Uh, you know, you're in college, you're at your workplace, whatever. And someone says, yeah, I mean, sure, uh, Jesus, maybe 10 commandments, I suppose, but that's just man's opinion. Didn't you know that the Bible is rewritten? Didn't you know that the Bible, you know, is compiled over, over centuries? Didn't you know that it's just, it's so confusing. There's so many contradictions. I love a story. Uh, a number of years ago, I was working in a restaurant and one of the managers, nice guy, he's like, ah, blah, blah, blah. You know, he's one of those kind of like witty, atheisty guys, you know. A lot of times the atheists are just cranky, they're not very funny or witty, but this guy was. And he was like, well, yeah, there's a Bible, just, he's just, there's just so many contradictions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Okay. What, um, what are your top three contradictions like that are just bother you so much? And, you know, he's kind of pause for a moment. And I'm like, well, you know, just, just give, just give me one or two, just one. What's, what's a contradiction that you just, you just can't, you just can't wrap your head around. <laughs> and of course I'm, I'm, I'm mostly asking, like I'm trying to, but I'm also trying to expose his folly, right? Because people these days, we just wander around most people and just say whatever, right? I'm a man when I'm really a woman, or I'm this when I'm really that I'm married. I'm not, I'm not married. Like we lie all the time. And people just say stuff. I mean, politicians have been doing it for decades, right? We see this with uh, many, many people. And they need to be brought to the feet. Their feet need to be brought to the uh, fire. So, of course, he was had no contradictions because he didn't really know. He just is repeating something. So that's the type of thing that I do with this channel, trying to be against that, but for the person, right? And say, listen, Jesus washes liars he cleans liars he makes liars new like with other sins there aren't christian liars or lying christians now you might struggle with telling the truth but that's called a struggle right so is the bible just man's opinion or is it god's word or is it kind of a mix well those who usually advocate for this don't have another book to go to and that's what's interesting. They don't say, well, the Bible's not God's word, but the Book of Mormon is, right? The general atheist isn't going to say that, or the general agnostic who wants to live with his girlfriend and, you know, possibly sleep around and work at Taco Bell part-time. He, de he doesn't want that. He likes video games, right? He de he's not reading the Book of Mormon or the Hadiths or, or, or um, the Quran or the sayings of Sun Tzu or something like that. He's not advocating for a different book. He's just saying, I just don't want a Lord. That's the kicker. I don't want somebody telling me what to do. I want to tell myself what to do. And sadly, we have this point, especially even with modern technology and so-called surgeries and all sorts of other things that people are really thinking they can be like gods, right? This goes all the way back to Genesis 3, folks. All the way back. Did God really say that? Did he really? I mean, you'll be like God. Sound familiar? But we need a starting point, don't we? Right? Because if I say murder is fine and you say murder is not, or I say murdering, killing babies is not fine and you say my body, my choice, well, the reality is what? I'm not talking about a tattoo. You want to get a tattoo? I don't care. I'm not going to go down Leviticus Road with you. I'm not going to do that. I don't even really know if that really applies. But anyway, some people think that I don't care. I'm not dying on that hill. You want to go get a tattoo, a piercing? Your body, your choice. You want to eat McDonald's every single day? Your body, your choice. But when it's not your body, like, oh, I don't know, the baby, you don't get to kill babies. Jesus says no. Moses says no. Okay? God says no. And I say no. And other people say no, because I don't want to live in a society. I don't want my children to live in a society where people just can carte blanche kill people for no issue at all. No consequence whatsoever. Right. Like if that woman, you know, who's pregnant has a baby and then she kills that baby the next day by snapping its neck, she's going to at least get get brought in for second degree murder. She should. 
But if she would have waited a few days before and gone to someplace like Illinois or New York, she could have easily killed the baby. Full term, full baby. With no questions asked. No police involvement. Nothing. That's insane. You want to live in a society like that? I don't. Where theft and adultery and all sorts of other things are just, oh, that's fine or that's not fine. Where it's punishable by death or, you know, you steal something, you have your hands chopped off one day and another day other people are given more free stuff. I mean, it's just chaos. I don't want to live in chaos. You don't want to live in chaos. We need to have a cornerstone. We need to have someone telling us what to do, how we are to do this. And that is the Bible. Now, in that video, I referenced a few different verses. Matthew 21, 42. Jesus said to them, the NIV, why not? Have you not never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Have you never read the scriptures? Now, remember, the scriptures there, of course, are referencing the Old Testament, right? And Jesus is affirming the scriptures. So sorry, Andy Stanley and others, you can't unhitch the Old Testament from the new. It doesn't work. It's it's meaningless. I mean, it's like starting a movie, a two-hour movie, an hour and 30 minutes in, and then wondering what's going on and why am I doing this? Uh, watching The Big Lebowski. No, I'm not going to advocate for that. Just kidding. I mean, you can watch it, but it's pretty crass at points. Not the point. Ephesians 2.20, 220, but on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ himself being the cornerstone. So what is he talking about? A cornerstone. What does this mean? Well, a cornerstone is simply, is simply the foundation in which they would build a building, right? You have to have a perfect cornerstone. So then everything else would go out from there. If you didn't, you have problems. Now, we don't have specific cornerstones today. But what we do have are foundations, don't we? And if I show up to a job site with, for lack of a better word, a ruler, of course, we use measuring tapes, but a ruler that's 12 and a half inches and you show up with a ruler that's 11 inches and somebody else shows up with a ruler that's almost 12 inches and we're both measuring for the foundation and we're getting the mortar ready, we're doing this and this and this, and then we're going to throw up the framing and then eventually get to the insulation and the drywall and the wiring and everything else, we're going to have some serious problems, aren't we? Because our cornerstone, our foundation, our ruler, or what the word canon means, it means ruler, it means read, what that means is I'm going to measure one thing and you're going to come beside me, check it, and say, oh, no, 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 it's not quite three feet. It's not quite this. And I'm going to say, oh, no, no, it is. And then I'm going to measure it. And all we're going to do is basically babble, waste time back and forth. Or we have to decide mine is correct and yours isn't, or yours is correct and mine is not. We have to have a foundation. We cannot have no foundation, no cornerstone. So Ephesians 2.20, of course, echoing what is said by Christ, who, of course, is referencing the cornerstone referenced in Isaiah, Isaiah 28, 16. So this is what the Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, and the one who believes will never be shaken, never be shaken. That's good. And that's the good news that we need to proclaim, that we need to live, that we need to pray for and to be taught. Ephesians, 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 no, Corinthians, 115, one of my favorite passages. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. And we are found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, Christ not, is not even raised. And if Christ is not raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. And those who have fallen asleep have perished. If, Christ, if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. Then he goes on further and says, otherwise, what do people, no, I'm not, excuse me, uh, but someone will ask, how are the dead raised? What kind of body, you foolish person? And he goes in and he talks about the resurrection. The thrust of this argument here is Paul is saying that 
if people are not raised from the dead, right? If the Bible isn't man's opinion or isn't God's word, but it's just man's opinion, well then, you know, just do whatever you're going to do. <laughs> Eat, drink for tomorrow we die. Remember that verse? But if it is God's word, well, then God requires obedience. And that's what people don't like. So don't be mystified. Don't be confused. Maybe you go to a church that this is very clearly taught. Maybe you don't. If you don't, maybe you find one that you can um, or make your church better. Or maybe you need to go to seminary if you're a man and go become a pastor. Uh, that was part of my own inclination because there's a lot of terrible churches out there a lot of terrible churches i originally didn't go to seminary to be a pastor and just felt that mounting evidence as it were of seeing milk toast weak churches and realizing most people don't have the conviction that god calls men to preach with but that's another story for another time Lastly, this gospel, as we can always be reminded of, is Romans 1. Now, the gospel broadly, of course, is that God saves sinners, right? That we don't save ourselves. God saves us. <clears throat> For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, Romans 1. Very well-known passage, I hope. I'm not ashamed of the gospel as the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. If you're watching this, you're probably a Greek. Like me. Now it just means not Jew, Gentile. For if it is the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, that the righteous man shall live by faith. So the righteous man shall live by faith. Well, how are we going to do that? By what faith? Well, faith in Christ, right? Faith to trust the one who's going to bridge that canyon for us. Right? Not our own faith, trusting in our own faith upon faith. I don't make the Bible God's word. It's either the word of God or it's not, right? Either God spoke and he created or he didn't, right? And this is where it goes back to materialistic evolution, Darwinism, and all that nonsense. That is void. People, they they try and, you know, have the shell game, you know, a little, a little street game. You put the little different shells on and they're doing this thing. And where's the little ball or the little rock or whatever? There's no little ball under the shells under the cups. It's not there. You know, it's the anthropologist. No, it's the biologist. No, it's, it's, it's the astronomers. No, it's the whatever. No, nobody has the answer. They can't account for languages. They can't account for the missing links that are still missing. Uh, they can't account for any of these things that are actual transitional fossils that should be happening millions and millions of times over to transition from this part ape-like creature, part human to more human to more, you know, and less and less and less and so on and so on and so on. No, we have a column a geologic column from a global flood all these dead things buried in rock layers all over the earth that's why we have that not because there was a slow progress of change and notice all these things and not to get too geological but all these things and all these layers are fully functioning things there's no transitional things my favorites are when you have polystrata or multi-level fossils like you have this like giant whale that's like you know five stories tall through multiple levels of strata that are supposedly multiple different years old. And it's like, well, yeah, but it's a whale though. Like whales don't die over thousands, tens of thousands of years. Like they decompose or fish giving birth or not. I'm sorry, not fish. Giving, fish don't give birth. They got eggs, fish being eaten, right? One fish is coming out of another fish. Anyway, Geology is fun. <laughs> Real geology. Don't, you know, brainwashing geology, not so much. But notice it's always the facts. We have, everybody has the facts. It's the worldview in which you view those facts. So is the Bible man's opinion? Well, if it is, eat, drink for tomorrow you die. But if it actually is God's word, well, he requires obedience, doesn't he? So turn to Christ if you have not. Repent and believe the gospel. That is the good news, the gospel, the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. All you have to do is believe, right? And that, that opens up the door. And then there's this sanctification process where God is refining you, dusting you off, knocking off the rust, removing these things through the power of his spirit. And that's different. 
than you trying to clean yourself up. You're never going to get clean. If you tarry till you're better, as the song says, you will never, ever, 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 ever come at all. If you wait until you're like, well, until I'm 30, you know, when I'm 50, when I'm done raising kids, when I have a little more, when I retire, nonsense. It's nonsense. I'm thinking of multiple stories I won't share with you right now because I don't want to sidetrack too much. Point is, the gospel is that good news. It's news because it's already happened. Christ Jesus came into the world, as 1 Timothy says, to save sinners, of whom I am foremost, Paul said. But at the end of the day, we're all the foremost, aren't we? Because we know our hearts, but we don't even really know our hearts very well because the Bible says that our hearts are actually deceitful. But is our heart deceitful or not? Right again, if it's just man's opinion, well. If the Bible is just talking about a bunch of old people here and there, rules, nonsense, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not though. It's not. Because if it were just man's opinion, first of all, all we have left is man's opinion, right? <laughs> we don't have anything else. No one else is advocating for something different. So you still have man's opinion when you have somebody say, well, I don't want the Bible. But you still have man's opinion. So your problem isn't with man's opinion, though, is it? No, it's not. It's with God. And it's with his, his lordship over you. So repent and believe the gospel if you've not. And if you have, walk in that newness of life. Do me a favor. I'm trying to get to a thousand subs, like I said. Um, if you've not subbed, please do so. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. And um, ring the little bell, too. I don't usually say that, but it does notify, although some people will comment and say, hey, I hit the notification. It still didn't show up. But like I said, I do these videos weekly, and then also I've got the Contra Talk, so it's more of a talk show setting. I'm probably, between you and me and everybody else watching, um, going to do a separate channel for Contra Talk, likely, just to kind of consolidate and uh, split off and you know we'll see how diversity goes diversifying i guess so that's it appreciate this appreciate you drop a comment tell me where you're from if you haven't already uh, the goal here is to be against the world for the world so I'm, I'm, I'm helping you do that that's the goal of this channel helping you be against the world